makes your heart pump. Yes. It's the life of God that makes your life up, uh, uh, that makes you up, uh, gives you the ability to go. That's why the Bible says even if you are beaten by a deadly thing, it shall not harm you. Why? Because you don't have natural life anymore. You don't have regular life anymore. He says even Corey, if you drink something that's poison, he says it will not harm you because you don't have natural life anymore. It's my, my breath, my rule that's in you, so. Understand, you're not living by natural means. You're not like the man next door. You are born again. You are born of God. You have resurrection life. The Bible talks about, you know, when we go down in the water, we go down one way. But when we come out of that water, when you walk up out of that pool, you did not walk out of that pool the same way. You walk out of that pool a new creation. Created in Christ Jesus. You walk out of that pool with resurrection life. You walk out of that pool with the breath of God. And the stuff that could hurt you before you went under the wall. Yeah, can't do it when you came yeah. out. Because you came out by a new life. Yeah. You came out by a new power. Yeah. You came out by a new ability. Yeah. Yes, and it is the ability of God. Yes, sir. All right, let's go over here. He says here, uh, verse number 22, he says, Before his Adam had all died, he was so Christ uh, have made alive, shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruit, not the words, they that are Christ at his coming. Uh, talking about the uh, resurrection, uh, not the resurrection, but when Christ comes down, uh, when Christ comes, he's going to receive us. We're going to be made alive. Those who have died will be made alive and will meet him in the air. Verse number uh, 23. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruit, not the words, they that are Christ at his coming. Then come at the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and all power. This is, this is what I want to focus on. He says, now after Christ comes and takes up the, um, the righteous, he takes up those who have died in Christ, and they meet him in the air, and then those of us who are, are yet living will meet him in the air. He says, and then the end cometh. He says the end coming, the fight is going to happen. The big fight is going to happen between good and evil. He says when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God. Once Christ conquers all opposing forces, once Christ conquer all opposing, all opposing forces, the Bible says uh, he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule, all authority and power, for he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. Okay. What we talking about here? Talking about resurrection life. The Bible says that Christ must reign mm -hmm. until all enemies are brought down. Mm -hmm. Now, the Bible says that God is waiting for a time when the kingdom mm -hmm. will be presented back to him. Mm -hmm. There's coming a time where Christ who is the king and lord over the kingdom now, is going to take the kingdom, which we have been made partakers of. Mm -hmm. We are members. We are a part of the kingdom. He's going to take this kingdom, and he's going to present this kingdom as a gift unto the Father. Mm -hmm. He says, but before that, or until that time, mm -hmm. he says, Christ has to continue to reign. Yes. Christ has to continue to reign until all of his enemies are made his footstool, until all of his enemies are brought down. And until the day where all of his enemies are brought down, Christ will continue oh, to reign. Yeah. Right. My question to you is, who's going to bring his enemies down? We are. We are the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says that Jesus is waiting until all of his enemies be brought under subjection of his authority. Mm -hmm. See, you have been given authority. You have been given authority. I have been given authority. And we are not only given authority, but we are seated in the seat of authority. And our job, our responsibility, is to bring everything under the authority and the rule that has been given unto us. 
because it's not our authority that we're sitting in. It's not our rule that we're sitting in, right. but it's the rule and the authority of Jesus right. that we're sitting in, and the purpose of us being seated there is that we might bring everything under. Amen. Okay, let me get this. Let me get this. You have been made to sit in heavenly places. You're not going to be there. You're not going to be there one day. You're there right now. You are seated right now in heavenly places. And everything is under the authority. Everything is under the rule that you have been connected to. Matter of fact, the Bible says at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow. It does not matter what the name of the issue is. It does not matter where sickness was, disease was, it's poverty. The Bible says at the name of Jesus, yes. every knee must bow. Mm -hmm. And you as a child of God have been authorized to use the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. It does not matter how big and bad they make it sound like. The Bible says at the name of Jesus, yeah. every knee. Yes. Yeah. That's it, Yes, yes, sir. He's going to reign through you. Amen. You 
you're going to bring it all under his feet. Under his feet. You're going to bring it all under his feet. Mm -hmm. Because when you speak, you're not speaking your words. Amen. You're speaking his word. Yes. Everything must bow to the word of God in your mouth. Yes. Everything, every situation that you're facing with, if you meet it with the word instead of what you feel or what you think or what somebody told you, but if you meet that problem with the word of God, then that problem has to bow to the word of God. He must reign. Reign means to rule. Mm -hmm. To have authority. To have everything under his power. He sits upon the circle of the earth. Everything is under his authority. Yes. And he has given that authority to you. Yes, sir. He has given that authority to you. He has given that authority. Everything is under your feet. Because you are the body of Christ. Amen. So everything that's under him is under you. Uh -huh. Everything that's under him mm -hmm. is under you. Mm -hmm. There is nothing that was left outside of all. Right. All means everything yeah. at the exclusion of nothing. Yeah. It means everything, every sickness, every disease was brought under the authority of Jesus. Amen. Come on, let me, let me take you somewhere else. Let's go to, um, I believe it's, uh, First Corinthians, the 15th chapter. That's what we want to say. Yeah. Yes. Start at verse number eight. Hebrews, second chapter, verse number eight. It says, Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet. God, talking about God, putting everything under the subjection means under the authority. To be subject means to be under the authority of something. So he says, God has put all things in subjection under his feet. He talks about his feet, talks about it's under him, it's under his power, under his ability meaning he's able to speak and command it as he desires. It says, for in that he put all things in subjection under him, he left nothing, listen to what he said here, he left nothing that is not put under him. That means that everything is under Jesus. There is nothing that is not under Jesus. I don't care how bad your situation looks. He says there is nothing that has not been placed under Jesus. They, they, they can big it up all they want and make it sound like it's the end of the world. But the Bible says everything and not nothing has not been put under his feet. Everything. If you can come up with it, think of it, imagine it. The Bible says it has been put under the feet of Jesus. Jesus. He left nothing that is not put under him, but now we see not yet all things under him. In other words, he says everything has been put under him, but when we look around, it don't look like everything's been put under him. He said, oh God, this is what the Bible says. He says everything has been placed under Jesus' feet. He says, and he has left nothing that has not been placed under his feet. But he says, but when you look around, it looks like there are stuff that has not been placed under his foot. Your, what you, listen, your eyes sometimes lie to you. Mm -hmm. Let me read it again. Let me read it again. You got to 
understand what I'm talking about today. Verse number eight says, Thou hast put all things, all things in subjection under his feet. For in that he put all things in subjection under him, he left nothing. How much stuff did he leave out? Nothing. He left nothing that is not put under him. Let me think about the things that are going on in my life. Let me think about the troubles, the problems, the issues that I'm facing in my life. Now, God just told me that he left nothing. That means everything that I'm dealing with has been placed under Jesus' feet. It, and then he turns around and he says, and this is the part I like, he says, but now we see not yet all things. In other words, when we look around, when you look at your life, it looks like everything is not there, but it is there. All right. That's why the Bible says we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are not seen, because what you are looking at is temporal. Yes. Look. What you're looking at ain't the truth. He just told you the truth. The truth is everything is under your feet. Jesus, who was made a little 